Hey guys, the PC guy here with the news and tech name for the week, and I'd like to open this episode with a small announcement. Apparently, GTA 5 is free on Epic Game Store right now. Uh, worth getting if you don't own it already somewhere. Uh, on Steam, for example, even though it's quite an older game, it's still at $29.99. So getting it for free, even if it's on a platform like Epic, which not a lot of people use, definitely a good deal. Or, well, deal, I guess. It's free, so definitely worth grabbing if you are interested. Obviously, if you watch this video later in the future, it's going to be too late. But for those watching it on uh, the first few days now when it airs, well, uh, consider it a bonus for keeping an eye on the channel. And consider hitting that subscribe button so you can see stuff like this uh, when it comes out and not miss out on deals. Speaking of subscribing, uh, it happens to be my birthday tomorrow, so yeah, you want to give me a present? Hit that button, I will appreciate it. In a slightly more serious note, there has been something going around on YouTube with some sort of malware bot, well, malware bot, let's say. Uh, some account has been posting comments on multiple videos. I actually have it on a couple of videos of mine. I deleted them in the meantime. It is posting something like wanna be friends or I, live, uh, I loved it, something like that on just pretty much a lot of videos out there, not just me, but a lot of other content creators. And these, these comments somehow are getting into people's accounts and taking control of the YouTube accounts. Now, this is especially threatening for channels and creators, but they could also take over your own account that you are just using to watch stuff. So don't interact with that comment if you see it on any video mine or anyone else's don't click and go check that person's channel and specifically do not subscribe it's not completely known yet how this exploit is being pulled off but it is suspected that it has something to do with what happens behind the scenes when and the data that is sent when you hit that subscribe button but youtube is working on it but it's not quite clear what happens so just Ignore that channel, compl that uh, comment completely, if you ever see it on the video. To start on the actual tech news now, uh, the highlight of the week definitely has been uh, NVIDIA's online GTC event. It was supposed to be a live stream, but it ended up being more of an upload dump on their YouTube channel of several pre-recorded videos. Not so much live, just they just uploaded them there. And we had a teaser like a day before of uh, our dear leathery friend Jensen dragging some huge uh, contraption out of his oven that turned out to be the DGX uh, 100, which is the Ampere version of their very, very expensive graphics acceleration unit. And by very expensive, I mean around a 200k. That unit is featuring eight of these bad boys, which is the A100 chips that we have actually seen mentioned on several leaks in the past. The specs don't really match up with what the leaks uh, suggested, but it is uh, the name at least matches and it is as we expected uh, using the 7 nanometer uh, chip it's a die size of 126 millimeter squared and it has an amazing uh, 70 well almost 78 teraflops of fp16 performance which is a massive increase from last generation sports hbm2e memory so 40 gigs uh, could potentially be 48 in future models because of the way they are configured it's eight gigabytes per chip it has space for six so it could potentially scale up for 48 and uh, almost 7,000 shaders, which is also a nice increase over last generation, as well as a 400 watt TDP. I don't want to waste a lot of time on this. This is clearly not a mainstream product for users like uh, you and me, or even more deep pocketed enthusiasts. This is not a card for consumer use at all. So I don't want to waste a lot of time on it. There were no announcements regarding the RTX series for consumers. All we know and all that was confirmed on GTC regarding the consumer versions of their cards is that they will be sharing the same underlying architecture. They are all going to be Ampere cards and there is not going to be a divide uh, like uh, Volta and Turing on previous generations uh, like, well, the last generation. I did a bit of a broader video covering this last Thursday. I'll put the link up there. Uh, should be somewhere here on the cards, actually, no, on this side. 
and you can check it out if you are interested in seeing more other things that nvidia has discussed on their online gdc event but uh, as i said this is a very uh, developer and industry focused event and not so much for us consumers not is also aimed more at professionals but not so much as the G uh, dgx that nvidia has launched amd the day before nvidia's event kind of tried to steal their thunder a little bit by sneakily launching the radio pro 7 which is like the name implies kind of an evolution of the radiant 7 and once again aimed at professionals it features uh, 60 cus or well compute units and it has an estimated 13.1 uh, teraflops of fp32 and 6.5 teraflops of fp64 capacity 16 gigabytes of memory and it is aimed at professionals working on video like for example the example they gave is 8k the card is going to be costing um 1900 uh, usd so yeah it's uh, definitely a lot more affordable than the gpu we just showcased also a lot less powerful mind you uh, they are uncomparable in any way shape or form but this was well amd's attempt of trying to steal the thunder a little bit other information that has been floating around, and this is a leak, mind you, so grain of salt right there. This is not confirmed information, but uh, China Times has leaked some information regarding TSMC's 5mm orders uh, for future products for 2021 and 2022. And however, it is in, well, it is not exactly in a language I can read, but it has been translated, and if it wasn't, you can clearly kind of see what the point is. So it is on the N5 node, or 5 nanometer, and it has a timeline. So for 2020, we can expect uh, Apple's A14 and A14X, there's a translation under here, and uh, Kirin 1000 for Huawei, and on 2021 and 22, uh, so could be either of those two years, so don't get your hopes up, Zen 4 for CPUs and RDNA 3 for GPUs on AMD. So I am kind of expecting the RDNA 3 to be more towards 2022, considering we are even yet to get RDNA 2 on uh, our desktop machines and we are already halfway through 2020. So yeah, that's probably going to be 2022 if I were to gamble. Uh, Snapdragon Hopper, which is going to be Nvidia's generation after Ampere, also would wager 2022 considering Empire itself is still uh, not out there yet unless they're going to be doing a very very short um, generation as well as xe gpu so that's a great surprise here because that's intel and they apparently are going to be tapping uh, tsmc4 uh, a15 is apple again and kirin is uh, huawei again now the big surprise here is actually seeing intel tapping uh, tsmc4 their manufacturing foundries this is not a huge of surprises because well this is a five nanometer known mind you and intel is having trouble even getting their 10 nanometer off the ground so if they want a bit of a more of an advanced note for their gpus and this is xe but we still have no idea what kind of xe it is if it's finally something consumer based or not but yeah we'll have to wait and see really but it will be five nanometers which intel is most likely not going to have running by then and they don't want to be left behind it's also worth noticing that uh, intel has historically had issues with foundry capacity and being able to actually pump out as much uh, chips as they want to so yeah uh, kind of outsourcing their new gpu line is in a way kind of guaranteeing that they'll have enough space to actually have their own CPU uh, lines running at the same time. Speaking of TSMC and their 5nm products, as uh, multiple sources have been reporting that TSMC has been planning to build a $12 billion worth of uh, plant in Arizona, so in the United States. Uh, keep in mind that right now most of TSMCs as the T in their name suggests takes place in Taiwan and the US is trying very hard to uh, kind of increase their self-sustainability in terms of chip manufacturing and bringing the highest end processes to be on their soil as opposed to on the other side of the world in what is clearly a kind of a geopolitical uh, step at China's economic growth. But anyway, we are not here to discuss politics. 
and this plant is going to be built it's going to be about a 12 billion dollar investment and it will most likely uh, require uh, the us government to subsidize it it is unknown exactly when it will be ready but uh, it is scheduled to start production in 2024 but that can always change depending on how quick it goes and the capacity they are expecting it to produce around 20,000 wafers a month now um, keep in mind five nanometer will be what they are targeting and by 2024 the already existing plant of TSMC is probably going to be manufacturing stuff below that or better than that I might say so it's not going to be bleeding edge but definitely a change in the whole scenario that we are seeing in the current days now the PS5 and the Xbox X are not even out yet and some disappointment is already kind of settling in regarding how the performance will be. The hardware on the consoles is definitely very respectable and you'll be able to get, drive games looking stunning at a reasonably high frame rate. However, developers also have to pull some weight and actually use the resources needed. So it turns out Assassin's Creed Valhalla has landed in hot water after them announcing that it their target their baseline will be 30 fps on the xbox series x and yeah it after that kind of microsoft came running again uh, stating that they are not going to be demanding from developers that their games will be running at uh, 60 fps or at an actual uh, minimum fps but yeah that kind of leaves us all gamers kind of disappointed with the direction this is turning and all I do understand that running at 4K 60 FPS is no trivial matter, even for people with NVIDIA GPUs, etc. with 2080 Ti's. It's not always the easiest thing to do in every game. But let's also not forget that Assassin's Creed Odyssey on the Xbox One X actually was running at 4K 30, and the new consoles are going to be massively more powerful than that. So it just really feels like uh, when the hardware gets more powerful, instead of uh, taking advantage of that to deliver better performing games, developers take that as an excuse, as a buffer, to kind of slack off an optimization, or just crank up uh, the graphic details when they are not necessarily needed or at least not optimized to perform uh, ideally and they just let the console brute force it with their power and uh, well save themselves some time actually making it run well this is also one of the facts that people are so viciously uh, angry at the bad pc ports that have flooded the pc gaming in the last several years and it's nothing against actual console players or the console companies it's about developers that are just too lazy to optimize things properly speaking about consoles kind of after five months in operation turns out the google Stadia control has finally been updated at least the software has been finally updated to be fully functional and actually utilize the wireless capacity that was supposed to be there all along even though the stadia controller had always been advertised as being wireless when it actually launched it still required a USB-C connection to actually play any games with Stadia with the controller. This was justified by them stating that they were not sure if the quality would be enough, if the device's wireless capacity would be enough to uh, actually be playable and decent uh, without input lag, all that sort of stuff. And it turns out that after five months they figured out it was. So thank you guys that actually uh, paid for the Google, uh, Google Stadia Pro or Premium, whatever it's called. Thank you for a contribution to a paid beta test, I suppose. Last but not the least, another load of leaks has just hit, this time uh, regarding AMD's Ryzen 4000 Renoir, and this is mostly uh, APUs, so it's what uh, AMD calls their CPUs with integrated, integrated graphics, basically. And they have a lot of SKUs uh, with a lot of cores ranging from a uh, 4 core 6 uh, CU running at 3500 uh, to an 8 core 8 CU running at 1800. So this is uh, both mobile and uh, desktop chips and this list is actually not very clear to visualize but this list lists here this has been leaked by igor's lab a channel on youtube if you can check him out and yeah you can it is sorted by tdp so the 35 ones are clearly going to be the mobile parts 
and then you have the 65 watt TDPs, which are going to be desktop parts, and that's the ones that probably interest uh, most of us around here. The focus kind of goes to the 8 core 16 thread parts that we see down here. And uh, although this list is slightly difficult to read, you do see that, for example, this last part is going to have a 4450 max CPU frequency and a 3600 MHz uh, G on the GPU. No, I'm actually reading on the wrong line. This is very annoying to read. It's going to have a 2100 MHz on the CUs that are on the integrated GPU. Now, I could be reading this list completely wrong because, quite honestly, the layout is a bit uh, weird to me. But the point remains that they are going to be uh, Ryzen 4000 processors with Zen cores, so it's going to be Zen tree stuff. And they are going to have uh, Vega cores for the CUs. So they're also going to be pretty powerful and they are just going to be included in your CPU. So if you don't really game a lot or play very demanding games, you could very well get away with just getting one of these uh, AMD uh, APUs or integrated graphic CPUs, whatever you prefer to call it, and call it a day and not have to even spend anything on a dedicated graphics card. So definitely something to keep an eye out for if you are on that type of uh, usage. And that kind of sums it up for the week. So I hope you guys have caught up a little bit on the most important stuff that has happened in the tech world. Hope you've enjoyed the video, drop a like and a comment if you did, and really consider subscribing to the channel because that's what we really need to grow right now. So I would highly appreciate it. It doesn't cost you a thing and you can always uh, opt out later if you decide it's not the right channel for you, which I hope you will not do. Hope I'll see you guys in the next video and in the meantime, as always, have fun.